So here's a question for you. Have you ever stopped to think about how many different kinds of sharks are there in the ocean? We're scrolling through some of them for you right there. There's the bull shark, the great hammerhead, the lemon, the leopard, the tiger. I mean, tons and tons of sharks. So let's bring in our shark expert, Jim Geschlinger. He's a professor of biology and a shark endocrinologist at the University of North Florida. <laughs> Ooh, that was a lot to say there. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. How are you? Morning, how are you? I am good, thank you. Can I just tell you, I do like the ocean, I do not like sharks, and now we're seeing a lot of these sharks that are coming so close to shore. Can I ask you, first of all, number one, why, and is there a specific type of shark that makes its way closer to shore than maybe some of the others? Uh, to be honest, all of them really do come pretty close to shore, um, at least the ones that are very common in our area. We've probably got about 15 or so sharks that frequent our region here in northeast and central Florida. Um, they are, uh, in many cases, seasonal, so they may move offshore, may go south uh, during winter months, but they come in closer uh, during the summer months, and they're generally following the bait fish. Ah. Um, so. No, I was just commenting on what you said. I found that to be fascinating because when you have these sharks and they're following the bait fish, which is okay. I mean, that's what they do. They've got to eat, right? But we don't want them biting us. And so I guess what the question is, how do we know which one is going to, I mean, do hammerheads, for example, are they the ones that are aggressive? Are the bull sharks more aggressive? So the hammerheads, although they have been associated with shark bites in the past, are generally um, not, uh, typically associated with what we generally refer to as shark attacks. Um, typically, we're looking at sharks that are making a mistake, like the black tips and the spinners. Those are very abundant off of our coast. Uh, and we generally refer to those uh, bites as bite and spit, where they'll um, maybe take a bite of uh, someone's leg and uh, realize it's not the fish they thought it was and <laughs> let it go and not come back. Uh, that's good, of course. Um, but some of the larger species, like the bull shark, of course, the bull shark is um, um, a species that not only comes close to shore, but actually can move into rivers and can survive in full strength freshwater. Uh, so those larger species, when they take a bite, it's going to have a greater impact and sometimes they won't actually uh, just leave you alone, they might come back. And that's what's so scary when you talk about the bite and spit where they take a bite because they don't, they, they think you're bait and you're not, but those bites can sometimes be deadly. You know, we've seen that in, in, in some cases. And so um, when we talk about these sharks, what is the most common shark that we have in our waters, number one? And number two, are there any endangered sharks in our waters, Jim? Oh, really good point. So the most common species are actually some of the smaller species. Probably the most common species on the southeast coast is probably a race between the Atlantic sharp-nosed shark, which is a smaller species uh, that um, can bite you, uh, but it probably only grows to about uh, five, five and a half feet in length uh, as maximum size. And a lot of us are familiar with the bonnet head shark. It's one of the smaller hammerhead species, also very common. Uh, and not generally uh, associated with any sort of any sort of uh, shark bites um, that um, might be inflicted on humans. Um, you uh, asked the question about endangered species and. One thing that's really important to note is that in the 1980s to the early 1990s, many of the shark species on our coast um, were severely depleted. Their mm -hmm. populations declined considerably because of unregulated fishing. Uh, we started to regulate that fishing um, in early 1990, and the U.S. has um, done a very effective job at regulating our East Coast shark fisheries. Uh, so we've seen a lot of those populations start to increase um, but one uh, species that I do want to make special note of, it's, it's of course not a shark, but it's a relative of the shark, the small tooth sawfish, uh, which is really only found in Florida. That is a species that was listed on the Endangered Species uh, Act for the U.S. Uh, the population has been rebounding, but as many of your viewers may know, we're uh, experiencing some challenges with um, the sawfish um, suffering from this spinning fish disease in South Florida, and this puts the population at great risk. Sawfish is really neat because it grows to about 14 feet in length, and okay. so it's just as big as some of the biggest sharks. It's nothing that anybody has to worry about uh, unless you catch one um, because they are uh, very dangerous swinging that saw around. Um, but it's uh, something that is uh, very special to Florida, and I think something we need to be concerned about. 
All right, good point, and I'm so glad you raised it. Jim, thanks so much for being with us. We certainly do appreciate you and everything that you do. Thank you so much. All right, you take care.